You are watching RE Master Talk. Hello and welcome to RE Master Talks with Amit Watts. I'm in Solon, 40 kilometers from Shimla. A quick fact about Solon, other than, other than that, it is also known as Mushroom City of India. Solon is also crowned as the City of Red Gold in reference to the bulk production of tomatoes in the area. The town is situated between Chandigarh and Shimla on the Kalka Shimla National Highway. And today we have a topic to discuss, a very hot topic to discuss. And before we do that, let me introduce you to our guest, an energy transition professional who has 21 years of experience. He's also an author who has written several leadership articles and a panel member of Crystal for financial planning. He's actively spearheading green hydrogen initiatives of vibrant energy and has conducted green hydrogen workshops for user industries such as steel and sugar. Welcoming Mr. Shardul Kulkarni. Welcome, Shardul. Hi, hi, Amit. Thanks a lot. Uh, and very uh, apt timing for uh, such kind of a discussion. Uh, things are just getting better and better on the green hydrogen. True that, true that, you know, since we are on the warming up stage, Ardul, I think this is the apt time, as you said, to bring on the topic on to green hydrogen. And what better than from a specialist like yourself to start the discussion with? Thank you very much and look forward. So, Shardul, what are the initial thoughts on financing of green hydrogen projects? Uh, the uh, green hydrogen projects are getting established. Uh, uh, world is able to see uh, the track record of these projects. First of such projects are going to be equity financed. Uh, I saw some specialized equity investors like H21 Capital from uh, UK. They have raised some funds specially to invest into uh, green hydrogen projects across uh, EU. Similarly, uh, what we will see once these projects are equity financed, then multilateral agencies like KFW, uh, which is German uh, multilateral fund, then ADB, IFC will step in. And for gigawatt scale, uh, uh, we would have to have a very wide spectrum of financing, debt financing coming into the picture, including public sector banks, uh, especially in India. And for that to happen, we need to have enhanced bankability, off-take contracting, standardization, uh, insurability more so, uh, are some of the things to happen going forward. And I'm sure uh, gigawatt scale financing uh, uh, is going to happen uh, in India uh, quite soon. Great. So, so uh, what are the kind of technologies which will be used to produce green hydrogen or they are into existence? Uh, Government of India has rec recognized uh, two technologies, uh, namely one is uh, electrolytic uh, green hydrogen. That is, we split the water uh, using RE power, which is either wind, solar, whatever may be the case. And uh, other, uh, uh, the, uh, the technology is a biomass-based uh, technology. Uh, so uh, these are the two technologies. In the biomass, we, uh, through gasification, through uh, either syngas or natural gas is produced, and carbon is removed, and one is left with only hydrogen. So uh, uh, that's, that's the uh, green, another form of green hydrogen that has been recognized by uh, government of India. As far as electrolytic is concerned, uh, there are several technologies uh, which are coming into the play, which is alkaline, a proton exchange member, solid uh, oxide, some of the technologies. Out of them, alkaline uh, based uh, electrolytic uh, green hydrogen appears to be front runner. Okay, okay. So, so Shadul, what, are, what is so special about the color of hydrogen versus green hydrogen? The it's nothing but uh, uh, some of the, I would say, uh, it's uh, hydrogen making is an energy intensive process. And the color of the hydrogen den denotes which type of energy is used to produce that hydrogen. So, for example, if coal based electricity is used, then it is called gray hydrogen. If gas is used, uh, then it is called blue hydrogen. So, if renewable energy is used, then if it's it's used, uh, 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 then it is a green hydrogen. All right, all right. 
So, so, so it was a layman's question, you know, please ignore on to that. <laughs> so, so, uh, so uh, Shadul, going forward, you know, why India should invest into green hydrogen? We've already have, you know, a lot of other uh, you know, facilities uh, to produce uh, energy. So why, why green hydrogen? Why should India invest into green hydrogen? A very apt question, uh, I must say is that uh, the first and the foremost thing which comes to my mind is the energy uh, security. And by, what I mean by energy security is uh, the dependence, 60% of our uh, uh, natural gas requirements and 80% of our, uh, 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 our crude oil requirements are coming from few particular regions. And we are always dependent on uh, that region's stability in terms of A, the pricing, and B, the import bill. So let's think that we, ab we are able to meet our energy requirements through locally produced fuel, which is uh, hydrogen, uh, then, then we are no longer dependent on the imported energy. Second part to that is green hydrogen. The derivative of the green hydrogen is the green ammonia. And ammonia is another angle for uh, India's food security going forward. So energy and the food security imperatives for India. Second reason, which uh, very important, is the democratization of the energy access. And what I mean by democratization, I'll give you a simple uh, example. Uh, think of uh, what uh, UPI has done to the uh, uh, fintech industry. Similar to that, uh, uh, hydrogen is going to do to the energy industry. So anyone and everyone who has the access to two things, one is the water and second is the renewable energy, is able to produce energy from anywhere and everywhere. So that's where the democratization of the energy access uh, uh, comes uh, and it is clubbed with the decarbonization goals uh, of, uh, of, the India, of India, which has set for itself. And uh, if everything goes right, then India in the future can become export potential, uh, uh, export, uh, can export uh, significant quantities of the green hydrogen uh, to countries like uh, EU, Japan, and South Korea. Great, great. So, so I, I see, you know, I've been reading also a lot of things, Shardul, that, you know, there are a lot of associations happening between India and other countries, you know, and there's a lot of push uh, towards the green hydrogen so far. But then how has been the policy level journey of green hydrogen in India been so far? Oh, yeah. Uh, in uh, uh, in uh, uh, sort of, it st all started with our Honorable Prime Minister uh, announcing the uh, green hydrogen mission uh, on 74th Independence Day celebration last year. And what he made a very bold announcement that uh, we will be energy independent by 2047. And that is that is a very significant statement to make. Uh, and uh, he, uh, thereafter, in February 2022, a green uh, hydrogen policy has been, uh, uh, has been introduced by Ministry of Power. Uh, with the aspiration of setting up uh, 5 million metric tons per annum of the green hydrogen production uh, by 2030. That was the aspiration. And uh, recently, uh, in the month of June, uh, uh, and it was announced that time in February 2022, that we will uh, uh, soon come up with a national hydrogen mission, and uh, which I believe is under work is under process, and any time it would be announced, but just a few days back, uh, uh, in the last week of June, uh, as a precursor to this National Hydrogen Mission, uh, Niti Ayo has come up with a report and they have uh, enhanced this target of 5 mm TPA to 13 mm TPA, 13 mm TPA by 2030, which is again very significant push uh, to not only domestic market, but to the export market of green hydrogen. Right, right, right. So, uh, Shadu, since you know, we've spoken about that, you know, the uh, 
government has uh, is favoring the green hydrogen the policies are pretty good you know uh, uh, so also we wanted to know you know the audience can also know something about the applications of green hydrogen oh yeah 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 in fact uh, it's it's like this uh, think of the hydrocarbon economy and you minus uh, currently we are everywhere using uh, the hydrogen uh, it's although it's club with a carbon but i will give you very uh, small uh, examples in the in the existing uh, industrial applications uh, is particularly getting used for upgrading our fossil fuels in the petrochemical complexes uh, uh, to remove the sulfur for example it's where it's getting used and what you can see is that as the crude is becoming more and more deep water crude which is we in in energy terminology uh, it's we call it sour uh, 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 crude that has a higher sulfur content which means i need higher quantities of the hydrogen to remove uh, sulfur to meet my emission requirements as per uh, bharat norms that is number 1 mm. number 2 to produce ammonia i am using the hydrogen then as you know ammonia is a basic chemical for all fertilizer applications another uh, application of hydrogen is in as a coolant in the power generation industry wherein it is uh, uh, the power is getting generated and the turbine is specially gets heat up to 400 500 degrees so uh, to cool the turbine you need a very specialized uh, gas and hydrogen uh, is getting used as a coolant out there uh, another significant use of the hydrogen is for the methanol production and as you know methanol is uh, all uh, uh, base chemical for all lifestyle consumables like detergent skin care paints everywhere you think uh, we are surrounded by hydrogen uh, applications another uh, uh, what we eat also has a, some uh, hydrogen uh, uh, application uh, like uh, uh, we have this uh, special uh, food ingredient called margarine which is a substitute for butter in the food industry uh, 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 hydrogenation uh, of these unfatty uh, 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 acids uh, unfatty uh, first product is uh, uh, getting done through the hydrogen so uh, all the flavoring baking cooking requirements are getting uh, used by margarine and margarine uh, needs hydrogen uh, that is another uh, angle then uh, uh, in the semiconductor industry you will be very pleased pleased to know that uh, for, uh, it is used as a, a stabilizing material uh, for uh, for whatever chips that, that that are getting formed at a, a very mm, uh, a high level of uh, temperature in the glass making in, uh, industry it is used as a inert grass for material conditioning uh, in the rockets it is getting used as a propellant means in a cryogenic engines it is getting used as a fuel and last but not the least uh, our own balloons uh, uh, hydrogen has a very special property it's uh, it's uh, 14 times uh, uh, lighter than the air so it is getting actively used in all the uh, 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 balloons which are uh, uh, environmental uh, studies uh, uh, getting used for those uh, 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 for them that's application is happening at the moment and since hydrogen is go going to get the uh, 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 limelight uh, we see certain future applications in the uh, the gas which is coming to our doorsteps we will have soon uh, uh, 10% quantity of that gas being mixed with the hydrogen as one of the uh, fuel right now we are getting natural gas at our uh, uh, cook uh, the, the uh, in our uh, premises another example all the surface mobility heavy duty trucks we will see increasingly getting uh, uh, run out of hydrogen as a fuel a uh, few more places in uh, in europe and uh, especially in us uh, in fact steel is getting uh, uh, basic heating from the hydrogen and last but not the least even mobility which is in the form of a aviation fuel is getting inclined towards hydrogen so uh, uh, it's our hydrocarbon economy is getting converted into an hydrogen economy that's in a nutshell i would like to say
Wow, thanks a lot, Shadul. Shadul, but you know, with the lot of applications, a uh, lot of challenges also come. So we would want to know what are the technical challenges for green hydrogen adoption in India? Oh, yeah, yeah. So what uh, that's a very good thought, uh, uh, Amit. And here uh, what we are looking at is uh, one mm, part of that uh, is a lack of commercial scale proven technology. When I say commercial scale, uh, we have the technology, let's say at the megawatt scale that is proven. Uh, we are in process of moving to gigawatt scale. So that's where uh, the big applications like petrochemicals, fertilizers, wood start happening, and we and then we will be moving towards zero emission. Another fact is a domestic capability to manufacture the electrolyzer part of it uh, is currently we do not have a, a much significant quantities of the uh, electrolyzer uh, in India uh, getting manufactured. Uh, likes of that, uh, likes of LNT, uh, uh, Ohmium are some of the guys who have uh, started producing uh, electrolyzers uh, in India. Uh, but there are uh, 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 there are miles to go as far as uh, very large scale production yet to happen. And uh, uh, to happen that uh, technology licensing and transfer is the another issue, uh, which is uh, we need to address uh, uh, as a country. And uh, uh, that coupled with the fact that standardization and safety procedures for application of the hydrogen uh, also needs to happen. So if we address these three, four uh, key technical challenges, uh, which is uh, government of India is working, uh, a lot of think tank is uh, uh, working, industrial bodies are working towards it. And these three, four aspects uh, will get sorted out and then we will have a super highway of the green hydrogen uh, coming uh, uh, into mainstream. And trust me, that highway is in making. It's soon we would come up, uh, uh, soon we will address all these challenges. Great, great, thank you. So, so, so Shadul, what would be the price at which green hydrogen would be really competitive? And what would the uh, time frame to have that kind of pricing? Oh, very good question. Uh, the uh, India market is a very price sensitive market yeah. and uh, yes, economics comes first and then uh, if it is club with the sustainability, uh, that's a cherry on the cake. So uh, going by the fuel parity, uh, uh, we are envisaging that uh, it would attain, uh, it is already in terms of, uh, as you know, uh, uh, hydrogen is uh, 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 the energy intensity of the hydrogen uh, in terms of the calorific value, it is one of the highest uh, among the various competing fuels such as petrol, diesel, natural gas or coal. Uh, to give an example, uh, in terms of the petrol, calorific value of the hydrogen is three times higher. In terms of the di diesel or na uh, natural gas, it's almost uh, four, t four times higher. And in terms of the coal, uh, it is five times higher for the one kg. Uh, of the fuel. So if we look at current petrol price uh, and the current uh, green hydrogen price, uh, the uh, we are already cheaper. Uh, uh, green hydrogen is already cheaper than the petrol. Okay. Uh, if currently it is at somewhere uh, 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 adjusted to diesel pricing, adjusted for the calorific value. So if you adjust the diesel current diesel price of 120 rupees, uh, uh, three times of that, somewhere around 300 rupees per kg comes the cost of the hydrogen. Uh, the green hydrogen costing is around that level. And it would really become competitive if uh, we touch the equivalent pricing of the natural gas, say somewhere around 240 rupees per kg uh, in terms of the uh, KCAL. Uh, it would touch uh, uh, really, really uh, competitive. So anything between 240 to 300 rupees per kg of the hydrogen, uh, it would make uh, a, a very competitive case. And this uh, fuel parity would happen sometime uh, between 2024-25 uh, 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 for sure. Thanks to the adventurism of uh, Mr. Putin, 
the natural gas prices have skyrocketed <laughs> and the diesel uh, and hence other uh, uh, hydro uh, hydrocarbons have also prices of that also skyrocketed so this is the right time to discuss the hydrogen plan for the hydrogen and make the hydrogen thank you thank you so much ardul for your thoughts you know which we would have a little more time but uh, uh, you know because this is one of the most uh, apt and the hottest topics as we said you know before we started the program so a topic well vision but a lot of hard work is required as we tread further to realize the visionary dream so thank you so much ardul for being with us thank you and ladies and gentlemen to delve more on green hydrogen join us on 29th of july from 3 to 4 pm on an elite webinar on green hydrogen with the top shots joining us for deliberations the link of the webinar is mentioned below further we look forward to connecting with you at rei from 28 to 30th of september as we celebrate the crystal edition with many more niche topics this is amit watts at ari mas talks thank you so much r e mas talk